Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Hansen. I have only two more stories to read to you, but today I'm reading An Earthworm's Life. You're going to be doing a comparison between Diary of a Worm that you listen to on the YouTube channel and this story that I'm going to read you today. You're going to think about the characters and how they were the same, how the books were different. Okay. Um, so, an earthworm's life. An earthworm spends most of its life hidden beneath our feet. In spring, an adult earthworm leaves its egg case in an underground burrow. Two months later, a baby earthworm hatches from its egg. It crawls out of the egg case. The young earthworm tunnels through the soil. At night, it feeds on dead leaves. Sometimes the earthworm eats soil. The soil goes through the earthworm's body. It comes out as a pile of round balls called castings. By fall, the earthworm is nearly full grown. It pulls dead plants into its burrow. Oh, I wonder what he's gonna do with those. The earthworm eats the plants till winter. Then it is time to sleep. That sleeping in the winter has a name. I hope some of you remember that. It's called hibernation. Spring rains bring the earthworm back to the surface. When a hungry mole comes near, the earthworm sneaks away. He doesn't want to become mole food. The earthworm begins to look for a mate. It finds one outside a nearby burrow. So you're noticing by now, hopefully, that this book is full of facts about earthworms, but it's not photographs that we're used to seeing in some nonfiction books. But it is a nonfiction book. Soon, part of the earthworm's body bulges with eggs. The ring full of eggs comes loose. The earthworm slips out of it. It just slides right off the front of him. The ring becomes an egg case. The earthworm leaves it behind. We remember those egg cases from earlier. When the earthworm comes above ground, a robin grabs it. Oh no. But that robin does need something to eat. The robin struggles to pull the earthworm out of its tunnel. But the earthworm is strong. The robin gives up. Oh, thank goodness, he lives for another day. One summer night, heavy rains fall from the sky. Think about that. They live in tunnels under the ground. 
what's going to happen when it rains. By morning, the earthworm's burrow is filled with water. Oh my goodness. It searches for a drier place to live, but it gets stranded on a basketball court. Many of you may have seen worms in your driveway after it rains or on your sidewalk. They come up looking for a drier place to be. A young boy picks up the earthworm. He puts it in a garden. That's a very kind young man. Saving the earthworm, putting him back in the garden where he should be. That's what we would call an act of kindness. The earthworm spends the rest of the summer tunneling among roots and eating soil. He really serves a purpose to help loosen up our soil and make it great for plants. When cold weather returns, the earthworm sleeps underground. The story has circled back around to that sleeping earthworm. In spring, the earthworm begins a new journey. And that is the end of an earthworm's life. Think about the facts that you learned in this story Okay, about the things you learned about worms versus what you learned about worms in this story. You'll be comparing the two. Some things you will share will be just about this book. Some things will be just about this book. And some will be both books together. The same thing may happen in both stories. Have a great afternoon, boys and girls. See you soon.